Hi, today we are going to see what is d3.js. Hi, today we are going to study what is d3.js library and how to set up an environment to run d3 program of HTML page. Now d3 stands for data driven document. So there are three D's in this term. That's why the name to this particular library is given as D3. So basically it is just a JavaScript library for manipulating documents based on data. Now this data can be an internal to some HTML document or it can be an external file such as CSV file, XML file, or any data file. Your web page will customizable as per the requirement of data. Say for example, you have logged on into the page using your username. So whatever the next HTML page comes up or turns up over your screen is actually containing your name over the site. So that person or that user's name is not static. It is dynamic based on the previous screen with which you have performed or you have supplied your username argument. So actually based upon the data, your next data driven or documents will be based on data driven. D3 actually puts a life to your data documents. So whatever data that you are displaying over a web page, is being come into the full of life with the help of D3. D3 also emphasizes on web standard which give you the full capability of modern browser without tying yourself with some framework. So you need not to understand the framework of Adobe. You do not need to add and install some extension from Flash but it is inbuilt and it is directly supported by all the browser. This is one of the advantage of using D3. Another advantage of D3 is that it is very fast, it is supporting large data set and it is also having dynamic behavior for interaction and animation of the representation of data. Now D3 allows you to bind arbitrary data to some document object model. We will look into what is document object model, but here what is an advantage of D3 is that D3 will bind your web page element that is your body, your div tags, your circle, rectangle, bar charts, all these elements of HTML page which are ultimately known is getting binded with customizable data or an arbitrary data. Then we can apply data driven transformation to that document. That means we can customize the elements and their position based upon the data itself. For example, we can use D3 to generate an HTML table based on array of number. So inside a document we have series of numbers and I need to generate a table based on that data. So we can easily do it with the help of D3. Another example that we can perform with D3 is that you can use same data to create an interactive SVG bar for smooth transition and interaction. So for example with an array of number I am not interested to bring up or show some data or table but I want to display different circles or rectangle of different size which is the must be interrelated with my data set. So I can easily do with d3.js library. Now what is document object model or do? So whatever we write inside HTML code, every tag or the structure of the page is being translated into a hierarchical structure. So this hierarchical structure is nothing but DOM. The highest or the root element of every HTML page is a document node. Inside that we have an HTML tag which is a child node of document node. 
Inside HTML, we have two child. One is head and another one is body. Within head, we are having title and script. Say for example. So these two, title and script, will be the child node of head element. Similarly, inside body, we might have an element like h1, a, div tag, group tag or some basic paragraph tag. So all these tags will be nested according to their hierarchical structure. The way in which we have embedded them in an HTML page, the similar way their hierarchical structure or DOM tree will be formed. So every tag in HTML will get converted into a DOM element which is nothing but a node. These tags are actually having parent child hierarchy. DOM will make or has an HTML more logically structured and it also makes easier to manipulate these elements. So it would be easier for us if I want to add some tag. Say I want to add paragraph inside body which is having div tag. So must I must know the hierarchy of this tag. First of all we are having documents. Then we are having HTML, within an HTML I want to go inside body and within a body I want to go inside DIV tag. Now at this location I want to add some new paragraph or P tag or I want to remove some tags so like I want to remove H1 or I can update or modify some of these tags easily. D3 gives us tool to manipulate these DOM elements via your data. Say for example, data consists of only three elements, so three paragraphs will be displayed. If data is consisting of ten elements, ten paragraphs will be displayed and so on. So actually it is having dynamic behavior based upon the data. Now let us see how to set up d3.js development environment. So to run any program which contains d3.js environment, we must have an environment which includes four points. That is d3.js library, web server, editor and web browser. First thing is d3 library. d3.js library is actually J JavaScript library which must be included inside your page using script element. So there are two ways to include this library into a page. First thing is to download and store D3 library locally in your system and whenever you make an HTML page you will use that stored library which is local to your system. Another method is to include the library from CDN, Content Delivery Network or I can say directly from the server or from online. So here in second method we will not download an element, we will directly include a link from where it will be get downloaded. Now let us look at first method which is including D3 library which is local to your system. That is you have downloaded and stored in your some project folder. So first thing is to visit website for D3, that is d3js.org. Over that page there is some zip folder with name d3.zip. You need to download that zip file and you have to extract the content of zip file. There are two files in this zip folder. One is d3.js and another one is d3.min.js You need to copy these two files and store into your current project folder. Now project folder is a folder where you are going to store all your HTML pages and your JavaScript files as well as your CSS files. So the folder where you are going to store all these files at the same location or at the same folder, you are going to paste this d3.min.js as well as d3.j. And after pasting this particular two files, we have to include this files into an HTML page. 
So we will have a script tag in, in our HTML page and with an attribute of src we will write down d3.min.js. So this file is being linked as a script file of JavaScript from a local to your system. d3.js.org web page over here if you notice d3.zip link is given. Uh, for downloading the latest version. I'll show you where I have pasted all this content. Right, so this is my uh, within the download there is d3 folder which is zip. I am extracting these two files copying and pasting it my uh, project folder. Now my project folder name is d3 examples. Alright so these two files are getting copied uh, d3.min and d3.js. If you look carefully, it is being pasted in my db folder and with, within db, uh, there is my project folder d3 example. Right, and what I have to do within, uh, yeah, uh, how my skeleton or basic HTML page will look like. So there will be an HTML page, uh, that's why opening and closing of HTML tab and uh, within this HTML tag we are having head and uh, body, two elements are there and within head we are having title and uh, script tag. Now in this script tag we are having an attribute src is equal to some value and this is nothing but inside double code we are going to write down the name of file which is stored actually inside uh, my project folder. And uh, one more thing that is important that I have to store this HTML page at the same location of my d3.min.js file. If you are changing your folder, then here at this SRC location, you are going to, or you must write down the complete path to refer this JS file. Uh, let us see another method for including d3.min.js library. That is directly from linking from CDN, Content Delivery Network. So, content delivery network is nothing but a network of servers where actually files are hosted and these files are delivered to the user as and when required based on some geographic location. Alright, so we can directly write down this link https colon double slash d3js.org slash d3.v4.min.js or latest version is d3.v6 dot min dot js into your page just like in within the same script tag within the same src attribute but instead of the folder and path name we are going to write the complete url all right so this is my data driven document and here the complete src tag is given also at uh, this web page every time we can build in html i can copy down the script tag and to my uh, HTML page. Alright, so this is how you can include D3 library in an either of ways. Directly storing into your system or delivering from CDN. Next thing is web server. Now web servers are required without web server also. We can run some of the D3 examples but whenever we are talking about external data, there are some restrictions when it comes to load and external data like csv files or json file if i want to read it from computer system and display over the web page it requires web server so we can configure any web server like uh, apache xamp wamp or some extension uh, here i'm going to use an extension for chrome okay so this is my web server for chrome I can directly go to web page and uh, search out the term web server for Chrome and it will give an extension download. This is C. This is an extension, right? And I have downloaded this extension. That's why it is showing me launch app. So as soon as I will click on this launch app, a uh, file a window is going to pop up is web server for Chrome. Now what you guys have to do, I'll show you. So, okay, so first thing is to choose folder. Now this folder must be your project folder. That means my project folder within db data visualization d3 
examples is my the name of folder so this folder is being selected as you can see here folder name is there and complete path will be over here so i will select this folder as my root folder all right then uh, you have to click on run background start on logging uh, that is not compulsory uh, access on local area network that is if you want you can uh, and here also uh, set the port as 8080 all right and uh, it's advisable to take this set course that is cross origin resource access and after this i will start this web server Okay, so once your uh, web server is up and it shows the status started, uh, you can see web server URLs. Then uh, after configuring this web server, we next is an editor. We require an editor which is nothing but simple uh, like a notepad or there can be some great IDEs like uh, Visual Studio Code or we can use WebStorm. Eclipse, here actually I am going to use sublime text. Uh, if you are not uh, comfortable with any of these IDEs, you can always have an option for notepad. Finally, web browser. So, D3 uh, library basically supported by all of the web browsers except Internet Explorer 8 and its lower edition. So, all modern browsers, Chrome, Mozilla, Safari, all of these will work perfectly okay uh, with your D3 uh, page, D3.js included HTML page. Uh, make sure that if you use CDN, you must have an active internet connection. If you don't have an active internet connection, I suggest you to download and store this D3.min.js file locally to your system folder. That is all for today. Thank you everyone for watching this video. This is Munira Topia signing out.